Hi, second episode of Digging with Deb. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about planning. Now, there's so much to talk about. So I'm going to just go over the summary of the t of the planning and then maybe in other episodes focus on one or other um, con conditions that you think about. So why am I doing this? Today is February 15th. Why am I doing this in February, planning a garden? Shouldn't we do this when the weather's warmer? Short answer, no. You want to plan um, during the winter because early planning is always best. Now, the first thing you've got to do, and I'll tell you why the early planning is best in just a little bit. First thing you've got to do is, why do you want to have a garden, a vegetable garden, maybe a few herbs? Why do you want to do this? Um... Do you want to supplement your menu? Do you want to do it just for fun? Gardening can be fun. Relaxation? Or are you going whole hog and you're planning for to supply food for your family for a year? Well, um, what you how you plan is going to be depend on which of those you want. I'm kind of in the middle. I'm kind of, I'm supplementing my diet. Um, there's some things that I plant that's enough for a year, but not everything, not by any means. So you have to decide what your goal is. Now, if your goal is to um, just get started, keep it simple and small. Um, a four by four raised bed will give you plenty of food for a couple of people and it'll get you, you can kind of see how it goes um one of my daughters started out with one bed and now i think she has four maybe more of those four by four raised beds and they get a lot of food from the those four little raised beds now i have 10 like i mentioned the last episode 10 big raised beds and I get a ton of food from it. You have to decide what you are. But I'm not doing this as a newbie. You have to decide. Um, so keep it simple and keep it small if you're a beginner. Now, um, if you want to plan for a family, you have to decide how many plants you're going to need. Because that's going to determine how much seed you buy. And if you're going to do that, you need to do something like this. Now, I know my words are backwards, probably. This is how many plants to plant per person to get a year's supply of food. I'll give you an example. If you want to plant lima beans, I know some of you don't like lima beans, but just picking that as an example. If you want to go grow lima beans, you're going to need four to eight plants per person. You're going to get about four to six pounds per 10 foot row. Now, you're going to, it says how to space the beans. And if you want this um, document that I typed up, just leave me a message and a plate and I can... Um, email it to you or text it to you because it's a digital copy and I can get that to you if you're interested. It has all kinds of plants and everything. But um, you're going to need to decide that. Now, you're gonna that's going to determine how many seeds you need. The next thing you need to think about is where are you going to put it? If it's a small garden, you're going to have it at my back step as kind of like a flower bed am I going if it's going to be a big garden how far do I want to hike to get to this to my uh, gardening um, mine is approximately I want to say 50 feet from my ha the back step perfect for me it's just right around the corner and I can get my get to my garden and work there and get back in the house very quickly 
but you got to figure out where do I have the most sun? Almost all vegetables, almost all of them need full sun. So you need, and they're going to need a lot of rain too. We'll talk about the watering later on because we're not planting yet. Think about where you're going to plant it. You've got to have a lot of sun. Make sure you have enough room. And then you're ready to go. Next, am I going to go organic or am I going to use chemicals? Now, I'm going to focus on organic because that's the way I garden. Rarely do I get chemicals of any kind. I don't put chemicals on my apples. Um, I have an a, a huge apple tree and I don't put a drop of chemicals on it. And I get a lot of apples. Get a lot of applesauce. Um, you decide. You decide. I'm going to go with organic first. So if you're going to use chemicals, you're going to have to look that up on your own because I'm not going to cover that. Next thing, the reason we're doing this is because we're going to grow. Uh, get a complete sentence. We are going to order our plants early because we might want to plant some plants in the house. And if you do that, like you plant tomatoes in the house, not in the garden, you're going to want to plant about eight weeks ahead of uh, planting time so that the plants are big enough that you can handle them. And if you do the math, I don't plant my tomatoes out until the middle of May, middle of May, middle of April, middle of March. I want to plant my um, plants in the house by the middle of March, and I need my seeds here to do that. So you need to get busy if you're going to try to plant plants in the house. Now, if you plant plants in the house, you're going to need a grow light. I don't have a grow light, so I don't plant plants in the house. I am going to, one of these days, get a grow light, but I don't have one now. Um, so I usually buy my plants, but this year I'm going to plant a few tomatoes from seed in the garden and see how that works out. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if it's going to work, but you're, you're going to learn with me a lot about that. Next is I prefer heirloom seeds. I got my, I ordered from my heirloom company, heirloom seeds, and this has 40 seed packets. It doesn't look like it. They're uh, non-GMO. There's a, one of the packets. This is lettuce. There's several hundred seeds in there because lettuce seeds are teeny tiny. doesn't look like it's very big because you're used to seeing those big packets. But no, that's not what you need. That's a packet of seeds. That's all that's in the seeds in packet anyhow. Um, and so, and I got some heirloom tomatoes. And so I'm going to have fun planting my heirloom garden. And you're going to watch what they do and how they work. There are a few things here that are new to me, and I'm going to talk to you about them when I'm planting them. i got to do a little more research about knowing when to plant my stuff, but th that's it. Now, I'm going to do heirloom. However, the reason I do that is because I think they taste better. I just think they taste better. And you can preserve some seeds for next year. You can continue to the the cycle you can produce your plants seed food and then let a little bit of it get old dried out you got seeds for next year and that's what a lot of people used to do and i'm going to try that some of that i'm going to get try to get a little better with that now some people like hybrid and those are better disease resistant and insect resistant. Uh, some people say they have better taste. Um, and I got to admit, they probably have better production per plant. So if you plant a hybrid bean, you're going to get more beans per plant than what I will. But that's a choice you make. You got to decide what you're going to do. So I've mentioned... Um, what, why are you going to plant? 
where are you going to plant? Are you going to plant organic or not? And then decide whether I'm going to you're going to go heirloom or hybrid. Now, um, some companies that I recommend you can type in online. You guys know how to do it better than I do. You can type in online, and there's going to be hundreds, hundreds of plant of seed companies. Burpee is probably about one of the best known. They um, send me uh, a, that because last year I bought burpee seeds. So I'm going to get that catalog every year until who knows when. Another one is, so it's burpees.com. Another one would be Gurney's, G-U-R-N-E-Y apostrophe S, Gurney's.com. They're a great company. There's one that's called Rare Seeds. That's heirloom seeds. Um, another one is Park Seed. I'm telling you, there's a hundred of them online, at least. And try to get one that's relatively close to where you are because they're going to grow seeds that are front for your area. And at least that's what the idea is. So you need to do that. The next thing is you need to organize your tools. I'm going to talk more about that on a future episode. I'm going to talk more about that on a future episode. However, I do want to encourage you, Jen Bauer Socks, yes, I'm talking to you. You need to get a notebook. And I got one that has a daily agenda. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to try to be good about this. Sometimes I'm good and sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm in a hurry. I'm going to write down when I order my seeds, when I plant my seeds, when I pick my, pl uh, how much I got when I'm picking, what did I get today, how much did I get processed for when I get make salsa in August, write it down. And that'll tell you what worked well and what didn't. You kind of forget year to year. So please try to do that. Um, the next thing is, when you plan your garden, I'm going to talk more about this in another episode, you need to um, have a master plan that I, you use. Now, this is mine from last year. You can see it's dirty and wrinkly. That's because it was in my garden. I carried this with me. Did I follow this 100%? No. Do you have to? No. But it does give you an idea. And the reason is some of these plants are not good to be planted in the same spot year after year. They'll use up the soil. They will... Um, um, get disease in the soil. Tomatoes are bad about that. They, they, if you plant them in the same place, they're going to get weaker and weaker year to year. So you rotate them around and that kind of the garden soil heals itself, so to speak. And that's what I'm after. That's why I plant organic. So plan your garden. Mine is a, called a square foot garden, and I'll talk to you about it when we're planning our garden a little more. I haven't planned mine yet. I got the seeds, but I'm not quite ready to put seeds in the ground. Now, I will say, heads up, I'm going to plant peas as close to St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, as I can. And sometimes my ground is frozen. Can't plant then. Maybe I could poke a pencil in the ground for a seed, but I don't do that. But it's close to March 17th because I find when I plant my peas early, I get a better crop. That's something to take into account. That's just one little handy hint. Let's aim for March 17th. You'll see that when that time comes, but we're not quite there yet. First, we've got to plan the garden where we're going to put those peas. And that we'll talk about that probably the next episode. So... That's all I have for you today. That's approximately 15 minutes. And if you want me to talk longer, I can. But right now, I think that's okay. 
We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.